Hello, welcome back to Really Good Appears, where we chat about and discuss all sorts of movies. My name is Gary O'Brien, and joining me today in the podcast it is my very good friend and Dwayne The Rock Johnson enthusiast, Orla McIntyre, as we talk about the 2022 superhero epic, Black Adam. So stick around, we hope you enjoy. Now, Orla, you've been on this podcast many times to, um, and we've talked about some big battles. We've talked about a Pride and a Prejudice versus a zombie. We've talked about a Dwayne the Rock Johnson versus a big ape. We've talked about a big ape versus a lizard. And then we talked about, I think, Dwayne the Rock Johnson versus a big river. But nothing will, no, none of those battles compare to what is about to occur between Dwayne the Rock Johnson enthusiast, Orla McIntyre, and Navin native actor, Pierce Brendan Brosnan enthusiast, Gary O'Brien. Oh, it's going down. Yeah, no, this is big. This, this is, is big. This is what everyone has been waiting for, <laughs> especially that one commentator on your um, Black Adam review. T- Tadpole 99. Tadpole 99. Shout out, shout out to Tadpole 99. Well, it was gas. So I was listening back to the last podcast you were on, Jungle Cruise, and we had actually ended it saying, you know, we're doing Black Adam. And I was listening to it again. And, you know, it's been... I, don't I know, think I threatened to Cruise. murder you if you did it with anyone else. I think you've done that in every podcast, pretty, Orla. I don't think it's very sure. specific to Jungle it's Cruise. It's very on brand for um, We did this in August last year. So it's been over a year oh in the making, this podcast. But also what's special about this podcast is it's your fifth time on the podcast. So you joined the very elusive group of the Five Timers Club of Reading and the Peers. I know, yeah. I mean, I, cu- I couldn't... We had originally planned to do a different movie for my fifth episode... Yeah. But then this came out and I was just like, you know what? It'd be rude not to. This is this is the this movie is the meeting of the greats. This is Dwayne the Rock Johnson meets Pierce Brosnan. You know, it's just yeah. Like it's not even the main battle of the movie, but it's the main focus <laughs> of this podcast, I'll tell you that much. That is the main focus of all our texts. <laughs> exactly, yeah. So, um I guess for anyone who uh is listening, thank you. So what my you might be aware of that me and David actually covered this in our monthly movie awards, um and Orla listened and has thoughts and comments. I did, and I have thoughts and comments, some of which cannot be repeated. Exactly, yeah. So we thought we would get, uh, we say we, the producer, me, and <laughs> Gary uh, would get you on. And it just uh, really interesting. I, again, when you said you'd seen it and you said you'd mixed feelings, I thought, right, let's, let's record this. Let's, um, let's have a chat about, I guess, someone who is so, uh, such a fan of Dwayne, uh, Dwayne the Rock Johnson's. Dwayne the Rock Johnson. I keep saying Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Throwback to my first episode. Um, <laughs> so, so, like, what did, what did they think of, uh, of, the, of him in in a superhero movie, a DC superhero movie, um, which I thought was quite interesting. So, uh, I just thought, you know, you said you were making. Oh, this is spoilers, by the way. In this, by the way, this it's been out long enough. You should have seen it. And if you okay, haven't seen so we're it, allowed to talk about shame. spoilers. Cool. I would say so, yeah, because again, if and they that's want spoiler got, free, they can go to the other episode with David. Exactly. There you go. Where you'll probably get a much more balanced view of the movie. <laughs> Who knows? I don't think that was. I don't. I don't know. I don't think that was fully balanced. Okay. I don't well, know. I, well, I would say David's on the end of, you know, what most, what critics kind of view of this movie. And I would have thought I was in in between, but you seem to be further down the other end of the scale. So I texted you after I'd listened to that episode and I said, I felt like I was in like a Mexican standoff between mm-hmm. you and David on opinions on this film because David hated this film. Yeah, he did not he have really fun. really despised it and you loved it. And I am so conflicted. Okay. So what, so for anyone who doesn't know, I guess what this movie is about, uh, I had explained it, but just to give you brief context. So in this ancient land of Kandak, Teth Adam uh, was bestowed the mighty, the almighty powers of the gods. And after using these powers for vengeance, he was imprisoned, becoming Black Adam. So nearly 5,000 years later has passed and Black Adam has gone from man to myth to legend. And now free, his unique form of justice born out of rage is challenged by modern day heroes who form the Justice Society of Hawkman, Dr. Fate. Adam Smasher and Cyclone. Now, why could I not have that synopsis ready in the episode, <laughs> but I have it there? I mean, my first gripe with this film, and it's probably not just with this film, it's probably with DC in general, but the Justice Society is one of the stupidest names for a group of superheroes I have ever heard. Um, yeah, sure. Yeah, because society is almost too civil. It's, it's, a, it's like they, civil. they're meeting for high tea. Exactly, yeah. Well, like, uh, come they're on, you got to see Pierce like you've, oh, first of all, the plain Hawkman is in is fully like kitted out with his logo. Pierce Brosnan's in a waistcoat for most <laughs> yeah. of that movie. No, that's they what I mean. They're, they're very, they're toffs. Yeah, I I was just like, that's really stupid name for a, a superhero group. But 
Yeah. So I guess, you know, I've got to, let's get right into it. What, what did you think of Dwayne the Rock Johnson in this movie? What, like, come on, I, let's, let's have it all out now. I mean, he was fantastic. I'm not, I'm like, I'm conflicted about the film, but I'm not conflicted about that. He was really good. Like you could tell he's been waiting years of his life for this opportunity and he did not waste it. He just went for it. And I really, I, I appreciate that as a fan of Dwayne Johnson, but also as an objective observer, um, which I can obviously be. But um, no, <laughs> yeah. I thought he was really good. He did really well in it, I think. And like, I don't know. I had mentioned the other one where I just kind of felt like he was being Dwayne The Rock Johnson a bit in this movie, a bit. There was some bits, obviously he did channel some form of a anti-hero by saying he wasn't a hero. <laughs> but I think my favorite part about him in this movie is how he's able to just exude this raw strength that he tries to do in other movies but in this like he is given this the power set to do so and he just like comes across as such a physical presence and you know obviously we've had the likes of Henry Cavill and Chris Hemsworth and such but like I don't know we've kind of seen that they've gotten big for the for those roles whereas Dwayne Johnson is like he is naturally a large man and I also think the costume did him a lot of justice as well in that it just almost looks like spray painted onto him like there's no padding at all it's just it's he's just scarily big and how his character is able to just cause such absolute damage and destruction everywhere he goes I'm sure the rock is just like and we're sure we can't have any more explosions or I can't kill any more people no oh yeah they were like sorry the budget's gone on your salary like we can't afford any more dynamite yeah but um yeah for the gloves really came off with him like he just yeah he was like he was like no I'm not this like guy who's taming giant gorillas or who's fighting a flying fo- flying wolf he's like no I'm gonna like fuck shit up yeah and he did because this this movie was supposed to be R-rated. Well, I think the initial cut of it was R-rated because of a lot of the killing and stuff like that. Yeah. But, um, and they're like, it's quite a gruesome movie. Like there's some really shocking deaths in this movie. There is, but I suppose probably what they did to stop it being R-rated was they didn't show them actually landing when he threw them. Oh yeah, but like, even but, yeah. the scene where he's electrocuting that guy at the beginning. Oh yeah, where his head falls off. Yeah, like was this, cool. I was kind of like, whoa, like, but like, I don't know, like, I, I don't know what young kids, they're exposed to all sorts of shit these days, but like, know. you know what they say about that, video games these days? Yeah, well, yeah, but like, I, I kind of think back to like, you know, Indiana Jones and stuff where the guy's getting, face getting melted off, like, this is nearly, maybe not I feel like that scene was actually ex- inspired by that, that Indiana Exactly, Jones yeah, and, and like, I don't think it's as astonishing from a practical effects point of view but I think from getting the message across that you don't fuck with Black Adam mm. it was a good introduction that... to his character because they're like oh yeah he's a hero like he's this this legendary champion and then like the moment he appears he melts a guy's face off yeah and it's that whole opening scene um, and again we're just going to jump around a bit assuming you've seen the movie but we'll try to give some context I've seen it but... twice You've you've seen it. You've seen it once for you and once for the listener. Yes. Um, but that that scene where he's awoken uh, by uh, Adriana in this cave by by when she utters the famous words Shazam, and he just fucked like you say fucks shit up. And the scene in which he kind of escapes from that is, albeit somewhat derivative of other stuff that has been done, but in terms of getting the message across and being a fun time in the cinema, I thought was excellent. I did appreciate the. Um the musical overlay of that of that scene. I can't remember what song it is. It's uh, 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 Paint It Black by the Rolling Stones. Yes. I was just like... Because oh, his name was Black Adam. Black Adam. Adam it? <laughs> Paint It Black. The slow-mo was just like... Which is very uh, like Thor Ragnarok, you know, that fight very, scene. Uh, X-Men Days of Future Past vibes yeah. I was kind of getting of uh, Quicksilver slowing stuff down. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, very uh, much like the rocks going by and him just turning his head. It was very, very, very cool. cool. A lot um, of smouldering in this movie as well. A lot you know, of he really smoldering. lives up to his smouldering he was reputation. Doing his whatever his character's name in Jumanji is with smoulder. Oh, you could say say the most Doctor Silverstone. Fucking, I it say his name is Dick Adams. Doctor <laughs> something or other. Jumanji. <laughs> I'll look at this up. Doing a quick Google. I'll do a quick Google. But yeah, he uh, really, Doctor he perfect- Oh Doctor Smolder Brad something. It's cut off. <laughs> Dr. Sm- Smolder Bravestone. Bravestone. I was close with the stone part. Yeah. But uh, it's because he's the rock. Exactly. Stone rock. Um, but yeah, and I think, so, uh, I guess, yeah, okay, so let's talk about the character of Black Adam because he's a bit different maybe in the comics somewhat from a visual point of view, but then also um, maybe from a motivational point of view in terms of uh, what his, what his um, 
Motivations are. So in <laughs> the comments you say, is mo- 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 yeah. I don't, I don't have anything planned. Uh, but he, so in the comics, obviously he got a full set of hair. So immediately that's quite jarring to see. Him I mean, bald. this is the, so. Uh, we, I should start with. I know absolutely nothing about Black Adam aside from mm-hmm. this movie. Yeah, and so neither did I. Uh, like I knew some parts of it, obviously, but like I did, I, I, I didn't think there's there is a twist in the movie that. You know, I, 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 when some people I spoke to did see coming, but like, and also took them out of the movie and they weren't too happy with it. But like, I didn't care. I was just like, cool. Okay. Twist. Let's go. Because, and this was the point I was trying to get to where it's like his motivations and this backstory they nearly create for him to try and make him a good guy didn't sit well with people. So just for yourself, again, like not someone who has seen or didn't know much about Black Adam then, I guess. How did you take that in terms of, you know, he's always trying to promote himself as not as a hero, but yet they give him this kind of sympathetic arc throughout? I actually quite liked it. So yeah. at the start of the movie, like you're going back to... Ka... Kandak. Kandak. I was going Kabak. Kandak to like... Kabak to Kadak. <laughs> going back to Kandak, like from 5,000 years ago and you're showing like the kid who becomes the champion and stuff. And they've got the like weird, the the man with the without the face like talking to him, and I was like, yeah. that sounds very like Dwayne the Rock Johnson. I was like, no, the kid's definitely not. So I was like, I was very suspicious from the start. Yeah. And then like he's coming through and he's going, I'm not a hero. And then when they show the backstory, I'm like, no, this makes perfect sense now. Yeah. Like yes. I didn't. I kind of saw it coming, but I was like, I was like, okay, it's falling into place. But I actually find found him it quite refreshing. Mm-hmm. Like. All like all when you when you like in Marvel movies and, and DC movies and they always give the heroes such tragic backstories, but they're like oh, like with Superman and Batman and they're like both our moms are called Martha. There's like one scene where he's like Martha and he's like why'd you say my mom's name? But with this like I don't know he he took the tragedy and he put it to work. If that yeah. makes sense, like usually yeah, yeah. superheroes their tragedy isn't like their full motivation. Their tragedy is like kickstarts them and then their motivation is something else. Whereas this, like he was out for vengeance. He was out for blood and that was it. He wasn't like, no, I'm going to make the world a safer place. He's like, no, stop destroying my country. And honestly, it was kind of refreshing to just have him so single-minded. Yeah. And actually, yeah, that's kind of brings up brings on to another point that I, I, I kind of want to talk about as well, which was like some of the, and I, I think I used, I over used the words uh, in the last podcast, but some of the social commentary in this movie, I thought was really interesting in that how mm-hmm. it kind of portrays this Middle Eastern country finally getting a superhero of its own. It's a country Question. that. Sorry to interrupt you. Is it Middle Eastern or not North African? Oh, is it not a fake country? It is, but I I'm, I was trying to figure out where in the world it is. I have a feeling it's North oh, African because all the okay. blurbs say Egyptian, finger quotes yes. Egyptian, and his name is Teth Adam, which sounds Egyptian. Okay, no, okay, then maybe you're right. I'm not but, too sure. I, but to be honest, again, I, I'm just guessing. See, I because I was I hearing something. I think I again didn't look into it, but I thought it was something about them casting. I remember them saying like, "Oh, look at us casting all these Middle Eastern." Although one of the actors is from Tunisia, I'm not too yeah. sure. So I, I was looking at it and I was going, it kind of is giving me like Algerian, Tunisian vibes. Okay. So anyway, Northern Africa, um, this country finally <laughs> getting a superhero of its own. And it's rife with, you know, dictate like these kind of gangs and organizations coming in and taking control of their country. And then nobody gives a shit. But yes, once they get a superhero of sorts of their own, that's when, you know, the Tea Party themselves, <laughs> uh, Justice League of uh, America, <laughs> oh, just society come in and... Be like, oh, we need to stop it. This is too dangerous. You know what I mean? So, like, I thought some of that stuff was quite interesting in the movie as well. Yeah, um, I looked at it as Western Western saviors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I I love that, and I agree with uh, David in the other episode that they should have done more with that, mm-hmm. but probably politically they couldn't. Yeah, fair. But I really liked that that they like were being overrun by colonizers for 5,000 years and currently yeah. they were being run by the Interpol's evil twin <laughs> intergang. <laughs> who who are a real thing in the comics, by the way, but aren't as, like, bland <laughs> as this movie makes them out to be. Yeah. I think they're just kind of using the name rather than the comic accurate yeah, stuff. Yeah, they gave it gets me the message kind across. of um, tracksuit mafia vibes. Yeah, very much very so. Very much yeah, yeah. so. But, um, 
Yeah, I really liked that, that they were kind of coming at it from a different angle of, you know, this guy was revered by the people in this country, but everyone outside was like, no, this guy, like, we're not even giving him a chance. He is going to jail. Yeah. And, like, they were like, oh, we'll give him a chance to to do it peacefully. We'll try and convince him to say Shazam to lose his powers. Mm -hmm. But immediately they just start beating the crap out of each other they do, they actually don't start with any kind of negotiation and i was like that is very it, it western saviors is the only way i can describe it is that they yeah. they were like no we have to save these people from themselves we don't save them yeah. from outsiders we just have to save them from themselves these poor you know uneducated barbaric people in this country that's been subjugated for thousands of years we have to save them from themselves because obviously they can't do it um, yeah, exactly. And I thought like that was an interesting thing in a superhero movie you hadn't seen before. Like, again, wish it wish they did more with it, but um, you know, there can only be so much of that while trying to focus on the smashy smash, uh, blowy uppy stuff, and also um, while getting funded. And while getting funded as well, yeah, because yeah. I don't think they got a Chinese release date in the end. And I know China can yeah. be very picky about what sort of political messages are in movies and such. And that's, speaking that's of West surprising. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Um, speaking of Western saviors, let's talk about the snooty, snooty gang themselves, the <laughs> Justice Society. Um, so I, I, I may have mentioned in the other podcast as well where I thought it was really interesting that, you know, they couldn't get the Justice League because they're too overpowered for Black Adam effectively. And they couldn't get the Suicide Squad. I think squad they, were on, they were on paid vacation and they were like, no sauce. Exactly, I'm in the yeah. Bahamas. Yeah. Uh, but also actually, so apparently the script for the, the Suicide Squad, the one with J James Gunn had did, mm -hmm. Was supposed the big bad was supposed to be Black Adam, uh, but they the Rock was like no I want to be in my I want to be in my own movie I don't obviously want to be like, this is yeah so uh, I, which I would have loved but also they couldn't get the Suicide Squad for this movie because they would have been so fine with him killing and a lot of this movie is the yeah. Justice Society trying to be like hey dude stop fucking throwing people off bridges <laughs> and you just like stop he, he, he is they they would see him like like destroy that mine towards the yeah. end and be like do it again. Yeah. Also, yeah, I, I had seen some comparisons to Black Adam in this, uh, like Drax, in that how, like, literally he takes everything. Um, especially when it's, like, suppose, when they're trying to educate him on, like, how to live in the 21st century. I suppose if you if you wake up in 5,000 years' time, if you, if you wake up in 7022, you'd probably take everything very literally. That's fair. Although, would I, would I speak perfect, whatever the hell they speak? He's magic. that... No, that's the one thing that took me out of it. I just he's wish magic. he. I would, no, he's not magic. Like, yeah, but how can he speak English when he's normal, not when he's little? That when he's like pebble, pebble black Adam instead of rock black Adam. That I don't know, but I, like when he's powered up, magic? I was. Well, I don't. When he's powered down, I don't know. But when he's powered up, I was like, no, this makes sense. He's magic. Yeah, no, that's that that that's fair. Um, but yeah, this society thing, I was a big fan of it. I just liked, I liked that we got no fucking backstory. I know that sounds like I'm being sarcastic, but I liked that we got no backstory. We were just like, look, here's these four people. They've been tasked to go take this guy down. Let's roll. And I, I was like, could not brilliant. disagree more. Why? Why? Oh do my god. Oops. So first of all, the way they introduce them, I mean, like Hawkman aside, who doesn't love Aldous Hodge? <laughs> Um, but he's like, he's talking to Wilder. Is that her name? Uh, uh, Walker. Walker. Amanda. Um, oh no, sorry. Amanda Waller. Sorry. Amanda Waller. And he's like, he's like, no, I've got a team. And he starts with Cyclone and he's like, she's really, she's really smart. She's like a tornado with a 160 IQ. That's grand. And he's like, and then there's this kid who's the nephew of this other guy. And then she's like, yeah, but they're both rookies. And he's like, nah, but wait till we get off round Dr. Strange. And that's it. Whoa! And Doctor I was Fate like, came first in the comics. He's <laughs> no, he's no second. He's no, no second fiddle. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> but that was what was going on in my head. I was like, first of all, I was like, why isn't she letting him just list the people rather than being like, yeah, but that's just one person. Yeah, but that's just two rookies. And it, like it being a weird back and forth, it felt cinematic, very cinematic, or la. It felt very have the cinematic reveal. Of like course it's I, staged. I love, I love. <laughs> A team building montage of getting the whole team together I love that but this was very the fact that she kept like she wasn't yes anding she was no budding so you have to remember she has had to she's the suicide squad director person or whatever she's used to this you know she's <laughs> used to people interrupting her and her having to explain why she's picked a certain person but she so didn't she's pick only them 
It's for the Suicide Squad. No, for the Suicide Squad, though. Yeah, but she didn't pick them for this. I know, but what I'm saying is she's normally on the other end, being interrupted when she's trying to okay, give so her list. Okay, so this is her revenge. So she's, it's a bit of her revenge, but she's just like, that's all she knows. She only knows the world of no <laughs> Her Noble entire Noble. job is just assembling exactly. things. Exactly. So, like, you know, this is what she's known and used to. So she's just playing her part in it, okay? Fair, like, but she I had to do like the it. same with, I don't know, Killer Croc and John Cena and Pete Davidson. <laughs> uh, so she's used to this, you know what I mean? Pete Davidson. Um... um but yeah, I, I loved all these guys. I thought they were great. I, I don't did think like it... them. Like, they grew on me. But the way they were introduced, I didn't like. Fair. Um, um, no, that's 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 so fair. And I, like, I could, I, when I was watching it, I was like, I could see people having an issue with how brief these backstories are. But I didn't care. I like, I like, I like to have more information. Just get to the Brosnan. That's all I was hoping for. I was like, let's get <laughs> to the, the Brosnan. We need the Bros. We need the Bros, the Bronham. Um, <laughs> but to, to, let's allow a lot some time to the other people. Um, so Hawkman, you know, I, I thought, like you say, Aldous Hodge was great. I think he played, to, to be so charismatic in a movie, and I don't mean this in a bad way, in a movie that's, somewhat headed up by Pierce Brosnan and the Rock, Dwayne, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. I think he did a fantastic job from an acting, from like comedic, dramatic and just action point of view. I think he just stole a lot of the scenes he was in. He's a, he, I completely agree. He's a really good physical actor. Like the way, like the stuff, like, I don't know if he did his own stunts. I don't know any, any of that. But like even the small bits, yeah. like where he walked into Dr. Fates's force field and just like, punk. I was like, I was like, it was you were impressed. Whoa, okay. Of all the things this flying know, Matt did, me. you were like, when he thonked, big fan <laughs> when of he thonked. thonked. <laughs> <laughs> it just, I don't know. It just got me. That's the only thing that comes to mind. But I just, yeah, I was really impressed with him. Yeah. Because I've only ever seen him in one other thing before. So I like, I, I, I knew him. Let me check. I can't Blind honestly Palace. remember what it was. It was the one about the slaves escaping. Oh, he's in Hidden Figures. Oh, yeah. He's very good in Hidden Figures. Oh, Who's and he's in Straight Outta Compton. Uh, isn't he the husband? Not the husband. He's, um, what you call it? He's the husband of like, he's the husband of, um, oh my God, all these names. Um, are, uh, Janelle, Janelle Monet. Wanna, yes, her yeah. husband in that. Like he doesn't have a big role, but he's still pretty good in it. Yeah. And I actually watched that on the flight back from, uh, the flight oh, to Greece. Oh, it's a great film. Um, and then he's also in, uh, Straight Outta Compton and other things. But anyway, he's great in this. And, um, Anything else I have to say? Oh, yes. The other thing I wanted to say about this man was for what this man has to wear, which is a big golden fucking hawk helmet, he rocks it. As in, like, it could look so silly, but he's If anyone looked good in that helmet, it was him. Yeah. Um, And then we've got Noah Centineo, who I can't say I'm too familiar with his work, uh, but he annoyed me immediately in this movie, but actually managed to win me over as discount Deadpool. I I am familiar with his work, considering my love of Netflix high high school rom coms. Oh, is he? He's in, in um, to all the boys I've loved before. That one, yeah, and um, many many others. He's one of Netflix's go tos for the uh-huh, fair. the the love interest. Um, at first when I, when he first appeared, I was like, oh god, I don't I don't see him as a superhero, but he kind of grew on me. Is probably. A bad pun for this. Yeah. Pun, pun unintended, but also intended. Yeah. Um, he was he 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 really played the the bumbling sidekick very well. Yeah, the hot hot dude on the team who's a bit ditzy. Yeah. Uh, he and basically his power is he just grows very big. Yeah. That's all. He He's just like reverse Ant Man. Like, reverse Ant Man. Um, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It was funny. I like. I don't. Th- I'm not like. My God. When's he getting his own solo movie or yeah. anything? No. But I'm like, if he shows up, he's something the comic again, relief. Exactly, yeah. Uh, and then you've got, uh, what's her name? It's Quintessa Swindell, or Swindell? 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 I don't know how, I don't know where the emphasis is, is on that. Swindell. Um, Swindell. Uh, again, she's kind of in it as much as Noah Centineo, but like, again, her power set is just so visually stunning, I Oh thought. my God. Again, I don't really understand what it is. It's like wind, she's good with wind. But she's uh, also got nanobots. Something about nanobots. Once, once she said nanobots, I was like, whoa, 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 you've lost me now. Yeah. Just wi- you had me at wind and then you said nanobots and now I'm Stop while you're ahead. Exactly. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, I thought she was great. Stunning. Like the, the luminous fog when she did her tornado thing. Big fan. Fantastic. Uh, and again, same as not, like, not crying out for a solo movie, but very much looking forward to Like if she's in something again. If they did happy. like a, if the two of them teamed up for like a buddy cop show, I would watch that. Exactly, yeah. Um, what would their couple name be? Atom. Sent to Swindle. 
Swindoneo. Oh, uh, you were Swindoneo. going off Swindoneo. Swindoneo. I like Swindoneo. Hashtag Swindoneo. Oh, wait, but she's also, isn't wind her thing? I feel like we could do something here with wind. Windoneo. It's got wind in her name. Swind- yeah, Windanello. That's their, that's their couple name. We should get on to, I don't know, who does celebrity Twitter? gossip. Twitter? Elon What's, Musk. Yeah, Twitter. Definitely. Musk. Comedy is definitely allowed on Twitter these days. <laughs> um, I'm not paying eight dollars. I... I, I set up my Pierce Brosnan fake account to party <laughs> account on it. Uh, my first tweet was, Gary, you've always been a son of mine. And I was like, oh, Pierce. Uh, but speaking of Pierce Brosnan, actually, uh, weird side tangent. Uh, I thought Who's he... he? I, <laughs> he I, like, okay, I said this in the other podcast. I don't think he's fantastic in this, um, but I do think his character is the best one in this, in my opinion, in terms of he has a fantastic arc and he is, every scene he is in he is just, he just steals every scene I know I said that about Aldous Hodge, but that was more the actor, whereas I mean the character of Dr. <laughs> anytime I mean, yeah. his powers are used is just like, I, I would take a, I, like I said in the other one, I would take a movie I would take a, you know, a mini series anything more with this character with or without Pierce Brosnan, I know he probably won't do this again unless they give him millions and millions of dollars, but just I want to see this character again. I think he deserves another Yeah, I would I would love to know more of his more about his character. Like they gave you a little like throughout the movie he was the only one where you actually learned more about him. But mm-hmm. also not enough. I was like, why is the helmet alien? Why is no one allowed to touch it? Like why did it disappear when he disappeared? I need more. Yeah. Uh, cool helmet as well I don't think we talked about it enough in the last one but I just think it's just like it's such a cool design yeah and how he's a, how he covets it like Gollum's like Gollum and the Ring and I just think it's really it's just like I think Pierce Brosnan mentioned in an interview how it's like it's like a drug to him like it's just like he definitely he stole it from Sat oh I, oh I wish he did I know, I, I'd say you couldn't though like you know the way you talk ask you hear Pierce Brosnan these... he'd be like be like no this is mine Oh, like, he couldn't um, give a shit though. Okay. He couldn't give a shit. Like he, oh, no, like, he he, like he, the man is like he he paints. This a lot isn't Mamma Mia to him. Yeah, you know Mamma Mia. He just takes a pair of slacks home. You know, it's easy <laughs> he enough. He sticks a bottle of Uzo. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um. And yeah, I I not that I cried, but I was very sad to see his character go when he died. Uh, to the villain whose name is Sabak, mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, that that was a great. Whose name I, was originally Ishmael, but then became Sabak. Yeah. Um. But I just love that scene. Were you surprised by his death? Not in the slightest. Okay. I was like, I, I knew someone had to die in this movie. Yeah. Because you need a death. The in fact these that movies. they someone... showed Hawkman dying, I was like, no, he's not going to die. Exactly. Yeah. But I just knew if someone was going to be dying, it was going to be Navin native actor Pierce Brandon Brosnan because there's no way in hell. I don't know if you watched. I did anyway. I watched all the press he did for this and he fucking hates it. There's only so much he can like deal with I people s- asking about like, who's your favorite James Bond? I was like, would you ever go back to James Bond? It's like, when's Bond movie three coming out? The only p- piece of press that I saw for this was Pierce Brosnan being interviewed by a guy from Navin. And he was oh, sitting. Like- he's sitting in the in the chair, and he's just like looking like he wants to be anywhere else. And the guy's like, "I'm from Navin," and he went, "No way!" And it was the funniest. Wait, do you mean, thing. Do you mean when he says this? One sec. Navin is deep in my heart, on the banks of the Boyne. There, yeah. across from the town, my grandfather, God bless him, built a lovely little bungalow, and that was my home. I don't know if it's still there. Uh, my brother sent me this last night and I was like, you clearly don't listen to the podcast. I had that at minute, at hour one, hour, the hour my, at one hour and 42 minutes in the last podcast. <laughs> Rory. Uh, but yeah, yeah that, once I saw that's that interview, the only, I was like, that's the only bit of press I saw for this. That's all you need to see. Um, <laughs> but yeah, he's not, he's not coming back into this role again. No. And um, yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, anything else? What else is in this movie? Um, so there's obviously a great cast. Like we said, we kind of discussed the story. I don't know. How did you feel about the third act, actually? Because this is where David definitely tuned out. Uh, you mean where it went so- absolutely off the rails? Yeah, 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 yeah. What do you think of that? <laughs> That's where I started to get properly conflicted about this movie. Okay, right. Being like, okay, you know, he's been captured, you know, bad guy's dead. Movie ends, right? Mm-hmm. And then suddenly it's like, Oh no, the bad guy's not dead. That was his plan the entire time. And now he's back from the dead, but he's a demon. And then Pierce Brosnan have to be like, Hey buddy, wake up. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, this could have been avoided completely if you hadn't been such dicks to him in the first place. 
a, yeah, from a from a, a narrative point of view, yes. But I think from a story writing and a script to, like writing point of view, I think you probably could have stopped it there and maybe had a bit of a cliffhanger or yeah. of like you know you think it's all over and then it turns out and then it's know, like his eyes it's... pop open in the, exactly. in the in the containment thing. Yeah, no. But I I think kind of the way DC's going these days and that like. So much has actually happened since this movie's come out. Like, Dwayne The Rock Johnson came out. I don't know why I keep see- saying The Rock, but he kept, he was like, before this movie came out, he was like, the hierarchy of DC's going to change. Um, you know, all the movies are going to revolve around this now. It's really exciting. And then the box office came out, which was respectable enough. It's a decent, like, and I know the second weekend drop was quite bad in, in the States. Mm-hmm. And like, I think, I don't think it'll make its money back because of advertising. And it was, I think it was like a 200 million budget anyway. But in, in regards to other DC movies, it's making significant bank yeah but they've obviously gone a different direction now with James Gunn and the other guy whose name I can't remember running it so it's and what's quite telling is Dwayne Johnson hasn't tweeted or said anything about that like he hasn't come out to say congrats guys looking for nothing yeah. radio silence so it's I, I'm very interested to see kind of what happens next I guess from That'll this be interesting. Um, but yeah I can kind of see what Warner Bros being like we don't really want to bank on a sequel for this one we'd rather just tell the story as whole and then see where we go kind of thing which is interesting considering the after credit scene so that they yeah, it looked like they were you know going all in on it so what's really interesting about this after credit scene was did you know about this did you know this no. was in the movie okay so I'm on a different fucking Twitter channel <laughs> because I mean I I'm knew not this on was... Twitter so okay but like David didn't know this either and like I knew this couple, I knew this like w- like weeks in advance and um not that I have inside sources, it was just all over Twitter. <laughs> but it's, um, so apparently this was shot, this was shot two ways. Well, it was shot one way, which was you just see the back of his head and you don't see his face. Okay. Because they didn't have Henry Cavill back for it yet. I mean, but that, I thought it looked like CGI. Was it CGI? So that's what happened. Yeah. So then what happened was he came back and they, so the, Dwayne The Rock Johnson got booed at Comic-Con because he teased that he was stronger than Superman or that there would be no Superman in this movie and everyone got very pissed off and then he apparently he has the same agent as Henry Cavill and was like Henry you needed this fucking movie because people are booing me on The Rock nobody boos The Rock except when I mean them to boo when I'm doing the wrestling stuff but this is the acting stuff so I can't be getting booed so he got so that's why it looks a bit weird because Henry Cavill came back to do it and uh yeah so and like who knows where Henry Cavill fits into where DC is going at the moment but like he's recently dropped out of The Witcher uh, a show yeah. that you know, obviously Liam was Hemsworth getting a lot of filling in weird yeah. choice so you know you would think maybe he's dropping out of that because he has and yet he did a Nola busy. Holmes too yeah I still have watched have you watched that I have not watched it yet I will okay but. right I have thoughts about that I'll save it for the <laughs> November podcast on a moment David um, but yeah so like who knows with it where anything in DC is going at the moment but the after credit scene oh yeah spo- yeah we said spoilers yeah. but yeah I'm glad I'm glad he came back because you know I think he kind of I know apparently there's some weird behind the scenes stuff with him anyway and I know he's not a great dude sometimes or all the time or yeah. something is weird, weird with him um, he's, uh, but look he's not a fan of the Me Too movement Oh yeah, that was it. I know there's something. It's yeah, always hard he to keep gives out that like, how is he do. supposed to ask a woman out? Ah, uh, yes, that's it. Like, oh, okay, dude. but taking separating art from artist uh, for yeah. just a second, I'm so happy to see this version of Superman back, mm-hmm. and I'm very. I would love to see him do. <laughs> Henry Cavill not get paid maybe no I don't see this, <laughs> this this version of Superman because I don't think he's been given like you say the whole Martha thing before. I don't think he's been given his his fair dues at all. Mm-hmm. Um, I do have. One bone to pick with you that I feel oh. like now would be a good time. Oh yes, the timestamp, the the, time the, the twenty eight minute mark. Of twenty eight last... minutes twenty four seconds. Okay, so do I, you want me to play want... it or do you want me to tell you? You, my you can play it for me now, but I, I might put a crisper version in for for the listener. I also don't like The Rock. <laughs> so I have the I have the same thing because The Rock's not playing Black Adam; he's playing The Rock as a superhero. Yeah. But okay, I also don't like The Rock," says David Scanlon. And then you don't disagree with him. I, I, I can't say... I, how am I supposed to say, no, David, you're wrong? If he doesn't like the and rock, he doesn't like the rock. very simply by saying, no, David, you're wrong. If he doesn't like the rock, he doesn't like the rock. I, I can't, I can't, you know, change his mind on that. But yeah, I am, I'm not impressed. I've known the lad for however many years. I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not all about, I'm not all about changing. If he believes in a certain thing, he believes in a certain thing. Do you know what I mean? The lad also didn't like Blackbird, a fantastic movie that everyone <laughs> should go out and watch and I'll use this podcast to promote it again. Um, look, you know, <laughs> you gotta, you gotta take David all. with all his, his pros and cons. Next time I see him, we're fighting. I'll be, I'll be That's like fine. Aldous Hodge saying to Noah Centineo, when we get back to Jet, 
You and me. <laughs> you, you and, and me. me. You and That's me. That's me and David. David, when we get back to the jet, you and me. You and me. You and me. Yeah. I'm Aldous um, Hodge, obviously. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> for different reasons. Um, so actually, and again, just to tie back to um, the last podcast we did, which was Jungle Cruise, mm-hmm. uh, same director as this. Is it? Yes, because you had actually you were the one to mention that in the podcast, that oh, he had yes. done this, he had done Shallow, uh, The River, and an Enrique Iglesias mu- music video. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> I would, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say this is his best work yet. However, I don't think it's probably the most distinct directorial imprint he has had on a movie. Not his normal movie. Yeah, like I like I think, and I, again, we kind of spoke about it with the third act. It has that very similar DC imprint of you know falling apart in the third act. Yeah. Um, but I think I think no, but I think I think like look production. I think the costumes are great. I think yes. the, the special uh, effects the, the are pretty good. Special effects are fantastic. Like I don't know. I watched um, Black Panther: Wakanda Forever there last week, and like there's some garbage CGI in this. And I know there's obviously all that stuff about Disney's um, overworking their you know uh, visual effects or mm. um, artists and stuff like that, so they don't really get the same quality of stuff done. But obviously, this movie's been on the shelf for a while, so they've been able to tweak it. So I still think it doesn't take away from like how good it looks, especially the Pierce Brosnan bits. <laughs> and uh, I say well, not Pierce Brosnan bits. I mean the Doctor Fate scenes. I mean his 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 like the the way they do his like magic stuff does look fantastic. Oh, like that so like good. that tessellated yeah. stuff. I don't even know the word for it, but it's pretty pretty his spectacular. Stuff. Brosnan's stuff. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Yeah, and I just think, yeah, I, I so like, I think you know, that all comes down to the rec- d- director somewhat. So, mm-hmm. you know, credit where credit is due. Uh, and also like having to direct, and I'll k- say it again, like Pierce Brosnan and, and, and Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Now, now maybe Dwayne Johnson picked this director because he knows he'll kind of listen to what he says. But like, hey, he, he has to be the one who goes back to the producer and defend the movie. So like, you know, fair, I mean, fair play. I mean, he's just gone back to Dwayne Johnson then because Dwayne Johnson is also he, a producer. He produced the movie. Oh my <laughs> God, yeah. It was, it's a Dwayne Johnson was managing. all in on this film horrendous man um, I'm honestly surprised they didn't put like have him showing up in a bar and doing a shot of tequila at some point I'm just surprised he didn't get to somehow like I thought they would have to change costume be like you, you can't go around wearing that it's too obvious and he puts on an off white tee to walk around <laughs> I'm surprised because it's, it's really and he didn't end I'm up in the jungle in either contract. it's like the most re- restraint way, uh, Dwayne Johnson has ever shown by not being in a jungle and not wearing an off-white Yeah, team. like, they could have definitely put in a part where he has to be, like, incognito and he puts on yeah. an off-white tee. Exactly. Where they're like, no, we you, we have to sneak through the city to get away from Intergang. Put on this off-white tee and some khakis. Yep. Nope, nothing. <laughs> also, uh, just speaking of costume as well, actually, I loved the second or the third act costume when he changes Oh, changes yeah, when he, like, glittery goldy costume. Yeah. Big fan of that. And he gets his cape. Um, Oh yeah, big fan. But yeah, like I don't know. Like again, like I kind of said with this movie, it is, it's it's nothing new. It is nothing groundbreaking. Yeah. Uh, it's just it's just I don't know. I, like David, like I said, disagrees. But it's <laughs> just fun and it's just mind numbing entertainment. That if you're on board with it, you're on board with it. The villain is garbage, but like look, not a lot of the MCU one stuff as well that are good either. And I think I, I don't know. You watched Doctor Strange two and hated, it, didn't you? <sighs> oh yeah, that's a big sigh. <laughs> Doctor Strange was a dumpster fire of a film, but I loved every single second. Oh, of it. you loved it, damn! Because okay, it's such mind. a bad movie. Have you met uh, okay, me? Fair. Yeah, it's true. But you like this movie, so that's not a good indication. <laughs> oh no, you had mixed feelings on this one. I had very so mixed feelings on this film. Ha ha! They take that logic, David. <laughs> <laughs> There's madness to my method. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, I will say uh, this is the best superhero movie I've seen this year. Uh, considering the, the other. Ba- the other have movies, you seen the I've Batman? S- no, but the other okay, movies, well, I've, the other superhero movies I've seen this film, this this film this year are Doctor Strange and Thor. Okay, that's fine then. So I mean, the bar was pretty low, but yeah, okay, yeah. Well, that's still good. It's a DC movie. Over I the mean, MCU, it will so I'll take that. it will always have a special place in my heart because it is Dwayne Johnson's superhero movie, and he has worked so hard to get this movie made. Yeah, like what? It's like Since fifteen years or something in the works. Yeah. Um, I mean, there there are several, like, I think you mentioned it in the episode of David, there is a lot of aspects where you're like, that came straight from 2007. Yeah, the whiny kid who loves skateboarding and just... Cheesy, cheesy uh, catchphrases. Cheesy cat... Oh, I, I loved the catchphrase in this. I thought that was great. I liked, I so I liked when he first said it and he was like, no, you have to stay before you kill them. I, I loved all that shit. Yeah. I was such a big fan. Um, 
Yeah, and I guess okay. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna end with some quick bits of trivia that I found interesting, which was apparently Pierce Brosnan was once considered to play Bruce Wayne and uh, slash the Batman in Tim Burton's original Batman movie, which I think would have been funny because I think he would have been awful at it. Who was the villain in that one? The Joker. Oh, that would have been yeah. the star seeing him. Oh yeah, wow, very strange. Uh, but also speaking of James Bond's in DC or comic book adaptations, he, uh, Pierce Brosnan is now the fourth James Bond to do so because Timothy Dalton was in Flash Gordon. He was also in The Rocketeer and in Doom Patrol. George Lazenby was in the animated movie Batman of the Future. So Sean Connery was in The League of Extraordinary Gen- Gentlemen, and this counts. But Daniel Craig was in The Adventures of Tintin. So all we need <laughs> is dead Roger Moore to somehow be in a comic they'll, book movie and they'll get the like voice, voice clips of him and put them in yeah. yeah Um, and then oh yes and this was the other thought, the other thing I thought was funny was that you know the way we loved um, Aldrich, uh, Aldrich Hodge uh, Aldous I can't Hodge say. Aldous Hodge you know the way we loved Aldous Hodge as yes, we do. I saw there was two people considered to play it instead do you know who this is no uh, so one of them was Alexander Skarsgård the Northman himself oh interesting and Wrong. the other one was Army Hammer <gasps> <laughs> I'm just gonna mute me as I puke into a bucket. Yeah, I just thought that that's was funny. interesting that they went like two very white actors. Yeah, again, that's what I loved about it. Yeah. Hodge, yeah, but I think I think this that's the nature of the movie kind of being in pre-production for so long that they were able to kind of make these sort of changes to us that mm-hmm. they could like. I think you know, it was an add- excellent choice for Hawkman, even though I don't really know who Hawkman is. Look, all you know, he's a big, he's a big gold bird with a spiky, spiky ball on a on a stick and a pretty and face, he'll, and a pretty face With that's covered in a big arms. hawk mask Those arms. <laughs> that swings a big, a big stick with <laughs> a ball with spikes in it. Yeah, his um, uh, his mace was very cool the way it like absorbed all of his weapons. Like, then it it turned metal. it turns into an axe. I was like, I want this. Yeah, it's just so cool. And um, well, like, look, anything else to kind of wrap up on Black Adam before we go? Not yet. Uh, okay Sus- suspicious uh, okay <laughs> anyway well like look or like i said um thank you so much for coming on and doing this it's very much appreciated and welcome to the reading of the Pierce five timers club um i want to say thank you to everyone who's listened to this and all the other ones if you want to know when new ones are coming out and also if you want to uh vote in the mighty Mo- the mighty movie mustache modown uh you can do that at, at reading the Pierce on instagram you can follow myself at Gary O'Brien on Letterboxd but it's spelt a weird funny way so you can just check the descriptions for that and also I'm doing Movember I might have mentioned it earlier on but if I didn't I'm doing Movember and there's a link there if you'd like to donate it's a great charity and blah 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 no but seriously it does it does fantastic work uh, all over the world for men's health so it's definitely worth checking out regardless of you know whether you donate or not just have a look um, and I think that's everything I wanted to mention oh yes you can s- subscribe on what you call it Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Spotify. And there's definitely other things I usually say, but I've actually Deezer? kind of forgotten. Keep, yeah, do it there as well. Why not? Does anyone um, use Deezer? Any, I'll, I'll tell you what, let us know if you use Deezer. <laughs> Reading the at gmail.com. Let us know. We want to hear from you. Um, Orla, again, once again, thank you very much. I, I haven't said your thing and I'm worried. <laughs> what do you want to say before we wrap up? All I have left to say is tell them the man in black sent you.